Hello, my mathematicians. Today we are going to be looking at lesson 9.3, which is all about graphing data. We're going to again be using the interactive lesson to help walk us through this. Let's look at the essential question. How can you use a coordinate grid to display data? Collect it in an experiment. Hi there. It sure has been hot here lately. Even at night, the temperature doesn't seem to cool down much. My neighbor has a thermometer hanging outside his garage. I've been checking the temperature every night around the same time. Ohi can help us see what today's temperature is. Wow, no wonder I've been feeling so warm. Ohi says the thermometer shows 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And for most of the last five nights, it has been in the 90s or above. You know, the temperatures have changed every day. Is there a better way to display the data? Maybe we should display the data in a coordinate grid. Well, why don't we see how to do that? Ready? Let's go! Let's observe an experiment and then use a chart to answer questions. Why does the chart record the be- A group of students placed three cubes of ice in a cup of room temperature water. The students took the temperature of the water every 10 seconds for 60 seconds. The results are shown in the water temperature chart. Use the chart to answer the questions. Why does the chart record the beginning temperature at zero seconds? Well, why do you think? Why do you think it shows the beginning temperature is zero seconds? The beginning temperature is recorded at zero seconds because the ice has not been put in the cup and the experiment has not started yet. What happens to the temperature of the water in 60 seconds during the experiment? So from 0 to 60, what happens? The temperature decreases rapidly for the first 30 seconds and then decreases slowly during the remaining time. How much does the temperature decrease in the first 30 seconds? So from 0 to 30, it went from 60 degrees to 50 degrees. The temperature decreases from 60 degrees to 50 degrees, or 10 degrees, in the first 30 seconds. How much does the temperature decrease in the last 30 seconds? It goes from 50 to 45, so 50 minus 45. The temperature decreases from 50 degrees to 45 degrees, or 5 degrees, in the last 30 seconds. Analyze these observations of the temperature of the water during the 60 seconds. What would likely happen if the experiment continued 60 seconds longer? What do you think? Because the temperature decreases quickly at first and then slows, we would expect the temperature to continue to decrease more and more slowly until it did not decrease any longer. Let's analyze the data from an experiment in which ice was added to water and the temperature was taken every 10 seconds. A coordinate grid can be used to graph and analyze the data from the experiment. Let's identify the related pairs of data as ordered pairs. So we're going to make these, the state, these data points into ordered pairs. The first number of the ordered pairs will be the time in seconds. So these are going to be the first number of the ordered pair or the x coordinate, the x value. And the second number will be the recorded temperature at that time. So our temperature is going to be our second value or the y value. Let's add a title to the coordinate grid and also label each axis. So you can easily just use the 
information is given to you in your table. The coordinate grid is titled Water Temperature. The x-axis is time in seconds. The y-axis is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Now you need to plot a point for each ordered pair. So remember, we do our x-axis first, go over, then up. For the first ordered pair, locate zero on the x-axis and then move up the grid to 60 on the y-axis. Next, move along the x-axis to 10 and up the y-axis to 55. For the next point, move to 20 on the x-axis and up to 53 on the y-axis. Next, locate 30 on the x-axis and move up to 50 on the y-axis. Move to 40 on the x-axis and up to 48 on the y-axis. Next, find 50 on the x-axis and 47 on the y-axis. Finally, move to 60 on the x-axis and 45 on the y-axis. Coordinate grids can be used to analyze data. Looking at the points on the grid, you can analyze the results of the experiment by observing how the temperature decreases quickly at first and then more slowly as the experiment progresses. Ryan's height, according to his age, is displayed in the chart. Some ordered pairs have been written for you underneath. What are the remaining ordered pairs? Type your answer and then click Check. Okay, so if our first ordered pair is 1, 28, our second one, 2, 32, our third, 3, 35, and then we have 4, 40, and we have 5, 43. That's right. 4, 40, and 5, 43 are the remaining pairs. Now, plot the two remaining ordered pairs on the coordinate grid. Select the correct locations for the last two ordered pairs. So if we have 4, 40, we're going to go over 4, and we're going to go up 40. Then we're going to go over 5, and up to 4. 43. That's right. These are the correct point locations. What does the ordered pair 335 tell you about Ryan's age and height? Well, if it's saying, Type your two answers into the sentence. If it's saying that his age is 3, that means at the age of 3, his height was 35 inches. Correct. When Ryan was three years old, he was 35 inches tall. Why would the point 641 be nonsense? Well, let's think of this. If we look at this, we go over six, and then we go to 41. 41 would be here. That means he would be getting shorter. Now, well, as we get older, we may shrink a little bit at his age of five and then going to six. He's not going to shrink. This is nonsense because this point would suggest that Ryan was getting shorter as he got older. So that's our lesson for today. Again, I'm going to leave you with one question to answer, and then I would like you to rate your level of understanding using this to fact.